So this is a continuing set of videos on different types of apoptosis assays. In the previous videos, we talked about using Western blotting to detect changes in caspases or PARP protein or cytochrome C. Now we're going to talk about different assays that can be used to detect DNA fragmentation, both uh, on a protein. I'm sorry, both on a gel electrophoresis as well as on in microscopy. So, if you recall in the previous previous videos, we talked about the fact that executioner caspases will trigger the destruction or fragmentation of DNA in apoptotic cells. And this occurs via activating an enzyme called DNase, which normally is bound to an inhibitor called ICAD. So in normal cells, you'll see it's here, uh, the DNA is intact because the enzyme DNase is kept in an inactive form because DNase is bound to the protein ICAD. And we covered that in the previous video. Now let's say apoptosis is occurring. As we spoke about in the previous video, ICAD, the inhibitor, is cleaved by executioner caspases such as 3 and 7. And once ICAD is cleaved, now the DNA enzyme is free and it is active and it is able to now cleave DNA. So DNA will act upon DNA in apoptotic cells here and it works about every 200 base pairs. This is because of uh, the fact that DNA, double-stranded DNA, is wrapped around histone proteins into these nucleosome complexes, so DNA can only really access the DNA um, every 200 base pairs or so. So there are spaces where the DNA can get into and access um, uh, the bonds uh, between the nucleotides and start um, cutting DNA. So this can be detected, actually, uh, analyzed um, on gel electrophoresis. But before we go there, we have to talk about the fact that this DNA doesn't methodically cut every 200 base pairs. It cuts randomly throughout the uh, DNA. So it might uh, skip a region or two. And so what you end up not is perfect 200 base pair cuts, but you end up with uh, DNA DNA cutting randomly through a piece of DNA. And so you might get some pieces of DNA that are 200 base pairs long. Some might be 400 base pairs long. Some might be 600 base pairs long. And again, this is um, uh, because the DNA, uh, DNA enzyme is not cutting to completion when we're assaying for um, DNA fragmentation. So if you're doing experiments in the lab and you're isolating your cells, uh, your DNA isn't 100% cut everywhere. It's cut. Um, it's not cut to completion um, when you assay for DNA fragmentation. So what you're going to end up with actually is not just a bunch of 200 base pair fragments, but you're going to end up with a ladder of DNA fragments that are approximately uh, 200 base pairs apart. So what would this look like on a gel? So let's say we did some gel electrophoresis, and again. Remember, gel electrophoresis separates proteins based on their size. So large proteins migrate very slowly through the gel, whereas small, did I say proteins? Large molecules migrate slow through the gel. Small molecules migrate faster. So yes, there's gel electrophoresis that separates proteins. This is gel electrophoresis that's separating DNA. So if we have cells that are not undergoing apoptosis, and cells that are, are going under apoptosis, what would the DNA look like from those cells? So if you isolated DNA from cells that are not undergoing apoptosis, it would uh, be very large. The DNA would be intact. It would migrate um, into the gel, but not very far. And those cells uh, would not be undergoing apoptosis. If cells are undergoing apoptosis, then the DNA enzyme is active, and it is randomly cleaving DNA. And so what you end up with is, yes, you end up with base pairs, uh, you end up with pieces of DNA that are 200 base pairs long, but also 400, 600, 800, 1,000, and so on, because, again, the DNA is not cutting to completion. So you end up seeing what is known as a ladder of DNA. Um, and this is a characteristic uh, um, fragmentation is an indicator that apoptosis is occurring. So this is another very common, very easy mechanism to measure whether or not apoptosis is occurring. And again, DNA fragmentation is the result of executioner caspases cleaving ICADs. And again, we covered that in a previous video.
So that's one quick and easy assay, DNA, frag DNA fragmentation assay. Uh, another assay that can be done uh, that is more qualitative uh, as well is a microscopy assay that looks at DAPI staining. So what's DAPI? Well, so DAPI is a fluorescent molecule, and, and hopefully you know something about fluorescence. Uh, fluorescent molecules are excited by one wavelength of light and emit another wavelength of light. So this molecule called DAPI, it emits light in the blue wavelength range. So when it's excited, it emits blue. The other thing to know about DAPI is DAPI binds very strongly to DNA. So if you take cells, and let's look at some cells here under the microscope, and you treat the cells with DAPI, so DAPI is nice because it'll actually go right through the membrane. It'll go, uh, you can do this in live cells. And if cells are not apoptotic, the DNA is intact, the nuclei are intact, and the DAPI will stay in these very nice um, ovals or circles uh, in the nuclei, assuming these are cells, let's say, that are in G1. Um, so under the microscope, uh, DAPI stains nuclei very nicely. Now, of course, we have to take away the plasma membranes because um, when you're looking at just DAPI staining, the only thing that's going to be visible under the fluorescent microscope are nuclei. The membranes aren't fluorescing, so I just have to take them away. Now let's say we look at cells uh, that are stained with DAPI, but these cells are undergoing apoptosis. So as we talked about in a previous video, what happens in apoptosis in a uh, apoptotic cell is that the nuclei begin to fragment. And so instead of seeing these uh, large uh, sort of nice circles or ovals of nuclei, you see a fragmented nuclei. And you can actually see this via DAPI staining, you will see these uh, structures that look like shredded nuclei. So this again is a qualitative assay, but a very quick and easy assay that can be done using any fluorescent microscope, virtually any fluorescent microscope that has the correct um, excitation wavelength and filters to detect DAPI stain. So you'll see this in papers. Scientists will just look under a fluorescent microscope using DAPI staining, and if you see this uh, fragmented nuclei, that is a good indicator that apoptosis is occurring. The last assay, which is a little more complicated, but also has to do with it fragmented DNA, is something called a tunnel staining. So this is a little more involved. Um, so it involves taking cells and fixing them and then treating them with an enzyme called TDT, as well as nucleotides that are somehow tagged with either fluorescent or some sort of colorimetric detection mechanism. So how does this detect uh, apoptotic cells? Well, again, um, this involves DNA fragmentation. So the thing to know here uh, is first this thing called TDT. Uh, TDT is an enzyme, uh, terminal deoxynucleotide transferase. And actually, this is an enzyme that immune cells use during a process known as junctional diversity. Uh, I have another video on junctional diversity, but that's in the immune system uh, section. Here, we're just using TDT as an enzyme to attach nucleotides to free double-stranded DNA ends. So scientists have exploited the activity of this enzyme to detect fragmented DNA in cells. So let's see how this works. So um, here is a on the top, we have DNA from a cell that is not undergoing apoptosis. And the bottom, we have DNA from cells that is undergoing apoptosis. So it's been fragmented by the DNA enzyme. So if you treat these um, two different cells with TDT and these nucleotides that are either tagged with a fluorescent molecule or some sort of colorimetric detection mechanism, they will label... Um, they will attach to free DNA ends. So that top molecule there, for example, the TDT enzyme will attach nucleotides to one end and the other. It's not a whole lot of uh, attachment, right? So again, the TDT enzyme will find free DNA ends and attach nucleotides to them. That bottom molecule, there's a lot of fragmentation in that DNA. So there's lots of free DNA ends, aren't there? 
So if you take that bottom piece of DNA and you add this TDT enzyme to it with these nucleotides, it will decorate, it will covalently attach these tagged nucleotides to many, many more free DNA ends. Again, what happened to this DNA? This DNA was cut by DNases because DNases get activated during apoptosis. And if there are many free DNA ends, one way to detect those free DNA ends is to add this enzyme TDT, which will add nucleotides to free DNA ends, and these nucleotides can be detected. So this uh, tunnel staining assay is typically done uh, either in fluorescence microscopy or immunohistochemistry microscopy. So either way, you're typically looking at a field of view of cells under a microscope, and if nematosis is not occurring, when you treat cells with TDT and these nucleotides that are tagged, you'll see very little signal in these cells. So you would have these, for these tagged nucleotides would not show up very much. But if cells are undergoing apoptosis, what would you would see is that there's this high presence of these tagged nucleotides in the um, fragmented mitochondria, I'm not sorry, fragmented nuclei of these cells. So tunnel staining would show you the uh, number of free DNA ends that TDT has been able to add nucleotides to. So again, this is another type of microscopy assay that scientists use to detect whether or not cells are undergoing apoptosis, uh, and it's called a tunnel assay. So that um, sums up uh, both a DNA fragmentation assay and a variety of microscopy assays. And again, all of the ones that we've talked about in this video all depend upon nuclei being um, fragmented and the DNA enzymes destroying DNA. So those are the two ones, uh, DNA fragmentation and microscopy assays that we've covered in this video.